Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I'm building my own CPU using the standard logic. And in my previous video, I've been mostly working on uh, instruction set architecture, on the architecture of the CPU. So I decided to use the stack based architecture. So I have a stack uh, and I have a small register file which is not connected to the ALU. And it will be an 8 bit CPU with a just 256 bytes available for program and 256 bytes available for the data memory like RAM and as I told you in the last video I came up with the architecture and an architecture documentation so after this I had a chance to publish it on a github you can check the link in the video description and I had a chance to actually fix a couple of errors I had a couple of instructions sharing the same opcode. I also realized that I forgot the clear command that writes zero to register X. So yeah, now it's fixed. And I also had some time to improve my tooling because that's a really unusual CPU. It's more like a micro calculator CPU than a computer CPU. So I don't have any tooling. I don't have any tool chain. I don't have a compiler. I'm not sure if it's possible to easily add that kind of architecture to a modern compiler like GCC or LLVM, I don't know. And uh, this leads me to a next issue, like how do I program it? How do I write the software for it? I can actually write the opcodes in binary, but I don't want it to happen. So instead I wrote my own um, really simple assembly tool i wouldn't even call it an assembly tool that's more like a mnemo code translator like autocode translator that translates my opcode human names to the binary and this is all it consists of a couple of lookup tables it reads a single instruction per line and writes a binary and yeah there should be not more than 256 instruction lines but it also supports comments so the files can be bigger and you can leave some comments here unfortunately that's just a simple mapping tool so i don't have any kind of a linker and i have to do everything on my own because of that like when you write the software using the like standard tool chains like a gcc tool chain or msvc tool chain whatever your compiler like converts your source code into binary code function by function and then it ends up with a list of functions like a set of your functions and then you call a linker and your linker like checks okay i'm going to put function a here function b there and uh, then it goes and updates all the addresses of those of the call size of those functions that's what linker does for you but i don't have a linker i don't have a tool chain i have to do all, all of that myself so i have to track all the addresses manually fortunately i have just four levels of nesting and i don't have too much ram and uh, too much register so that should be simpler but still overhand the tool itself just reads the file line by line and produces the like it it produces the file with the binary opcodes and it also prints the opcodes which it has produced. That's all. Really simple tool. And with this tool I can write some simple software. So I wrote a couple of programs. They're also available on the GitHub. I wrote a couple of programs just testing the CPU, testing the instruction set architecture, like how things go and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, I don't have my CPU yet. I haven't even started to work on the uh, of, uh, to work on any hardware implementation of it, but I would like to try my instruction set architecture. So to achieve this, I wrote a second tool for myself, an emulator. That is really really simple emulator. It's not uh, clock perfect. Uh, it's not even clock anything. It just reads. Well, it contains the program counter and it just indexes the program memory by program counter, picks up the instruction byte and using the huge if else letter uh, picks up the instruction handler. This is it. Really, really simple. Um, it's written in Rust and no nothing to see here. It's really simple. And the good thing that it also acts as a debugging tool 
So you can see, uh, for example, I have the test branching program. Uh, it contains several comments which are converted to some opcodes and with a hex stamp we can check that it converts properly like you see uh, the first comment is set 4 and 4 is a small binary oh sorry 4 is a small number so it will be load, uh, loaded into the extra as immediate and yeah my first instruction is 4 and like instruction on line 4 <laughs> okay that's a coincidence that's a knob and yeah, force byte is a zero, zero, so that's enough, I know it works. And I can run it in my simulator, and my simulator, or emulator, I guess it's more emulator, uh, provides me the exact state of the CPU on each stage. So every time it picks up the command, it prints like the program counter, it prints uh, the stack registers content, the call stack register, the register file. So you can check what happens and what's going to change after the each command. This is really useful because I need to debug my software somehow and I don't have any debugger I don't, and I will not have any debugging hardware in my CPU so I will not be able to use things like GTB. And this is the only thing that how can I debug my CPU. So instruction by instruction I will check if my commands are executing correctly and changing the state of the CPU correctly. Uh, one more thing that I have in my emulator uh, that I added like at the end, uh, it's not enough to have just a CPU and RAM. It will be nice to have some input and output. So to have a computer you need input, output, RAM and CPU. Like you may have separate RAMs like for program and data, but still you need some storage, you need some input output, you need some CPU. I decided that I will not go with any kind of input, so everything will be like hard-coded in my programs, but I still need some output to make it useful. So I'm thinking of some kind of a memory mapped output, where last 8 bytes of the RAM from 247 to 255 are just printed on the screen, like in their decimal representation and in their ASCII representation, if they are just ASCII characters. So that's why I have that output line. And with this, I can start writing my programs. I think this is a tradition that every time you write something new, you start, like it's just when you start learning something new or write some program in a new programming language, uh, you write hello world. Hello world will not fit my memory mapped output because I only have eight bytes, but instead I will use the phrase hi there, which is like exactly eight bytes, including the space in the middle. And to do this, I need an ASCII table and I'm going to use my template because you remember I don't have any linker. So instead I created a template consisting of 256 knobs and comment with a knob number. So I will know exactly where do I jump like that that works instead of my linker. So let's start with this template. Uh, first of all, I will put the address of the first byte of my output area into the register R11, so that's 247 R11, that's actually two bytes, uh, which I forget, and then I will uh, set register X to the values of, like to the codes of characters of phrase hi there, and use store by register 11, and register 11 is auto incrementing, so every time I will auto increment and move to the next address. That's why I would like to have those auto incremental and auto decremental in my indirect mode to save on manual incrementing of addresses to make my life easier. Uh, that's, that's pretty simple. You just put all of those codes one by one and if it compiles properly and if you execute it, you should get high there on the output. Yay, it works. Congratulations to myself. It works and I just wrote my first program. I can probably stop here, but I'm a curious person and uh, I'm looking into the future. One day I hope I will finish the CPU and this will be really interesting how fast my CPU is. But question how fast is a relative thing. Uh, you <laughs> usually compare something to something and then you define which is faster or not. So I would like to compare my CPU to my desktop. And uh, because of that, I need some benchmark. 
And again, I don't have any toolchain, I don't have any compiler, I don't have enough RAM, I don't have enough any everything. I cannot just get some, to, I don't know, dry stone or whatever benchmark it is and run it because dry stone requires a lot of RAM to be operated. Instead, I will make my own benchmark. Actually, I stole the idea from dry stone. Uh, I'm going to do some linear algebra operations. So I will multiply a matrix to a number. Then I will multiply to another one matrix. And then I will get a determinant of the final matrix. So I will have two matrices, three times three, a single multiplier and then determinant. And this is a lot of multiply add operations. So should be interesting because I don't have a multiplication. Well, I have a multiplication opcode, but I don't want to implement it in hardware because for 8-bit multiplication or without any pipelining and like a single clock multiplier, if I remember correctly, I think it should be 64 adders. So that's a lot of hardware and for now I would like to avoid it. Instead, I can use the primary property of the multiplication, like definition of multiplication. What is what multiplication is? When you multiply a number A to number B, you actually add number A to self B times. I have an add, I have jumps, I should be able to implement uh, the cycle, so I can implement multiplication via add. Actually, no, I can't. The reason is, when you multiply two 8-bit numbers, the result requires 16-bit, and I don't have any 16-bit registers. So, any time I will multiply it, I will actually multiply with overflow and leave just lower 8 bits. If I would have a 8-bit multiplier, like hardware 8-bit multiplier, I will pick up lower 8 bits and put it there. And I will get some like lower part of the multiplication result. Not correct, but still some. Unfortunately, with addition, it doesn't work that way. Because every time you make an addition, it may overflow and I don't have any carrying, I don't have any, well, I don't have 16-bit registers. So every time I make an addition with an overflow, it will introduce a new error. So the results will not be the same at the multiplication with overflow, which means I cannot directly replace it, but still I will implement this algorithm and will get some results. So for numbers like multiplication of 4-bit and 4-bit numbers will work, but if you multiply uh, bigger numbers, it will just produce garbage. It's still good enough for benchmark. I need to implement that multiplication and I can do it by uh, kind of storing one of the results, like one of the operands in the register, uh, adding those two operands together, uh, adding like first operands together first time, and then continue adding the first operand to the result and dec decrementing that register until it hits zero. I'm going to fast forward all that work because it took maybe 40 minutes and uh, it's been boring stream even in my opinion. Uh, still at the end it takes like 27 instructions totally and I had to implement one more instruction. I had to add a, a pop instruction because I already had to push the stack uh, that moves data upper to the stack but then uh, while writing that multiplication code I realized that uh, my addressing, and I use register Y for addressing, uh, requires like propagating data higher the stack, but then if I need to get that all the data, I have no option to get it out of it. So I can use something like, uh, like binary operation twice and recover the data, or it will be easier to add, uh, to create just a pop operation that moves data in the stack opposite way. So I had to extend my instruction set architecture documentation, my autocode converter and my simulator with a new instruction pop and after that it took like 27 instructions for the multiplication. Maybe I can do it smaller but uh, that's fine. I don't need to work on it. 
and this is it for today. Now, actually after finishing the stream, I realized like, hey, I just did the most complicated part of the work. I just implemented that multiplication. Why should I stop here? So I implemented my benchmark for the PC and I use it, uh, I, I made it in a form of unrolled loop, so it looks ugly. I know it looks ugly. Uh, it should be either loops or maybe SIMD calls, but now it looks ugly, but I did it this way, so it will be easier to transfer the same logic into my stack CPU. Just for the history, the execution of my benchmark, I mean multiplication number between number and matrix, then multiplication of two matrices, and then get a determinant, takes 67 nanoseconds on a modern desktop CPU. We'll see one day how long it takes on a physical CPU that built from standard logic. I don't know, but for now I need to write a program for that. I heavily use the property of my indirect addressing with increments and decrementing, so the program consists of several parts of four constant multiplications. So it takes the number and multiplies the constant 51 and stores on the next address. The first part of my program uh, stores some uh, jump addresses in the registers for future use, and then I just put the number of the first matrix, which is almost randomly generated from my current time at the recording uh, at that stream recording time. Uh, it puts the numbers numbers of it and calls that multiplication helper, and multiplication helper using the register R11 stores it automatically in addresses from zero to eight, like first nine. That's the first part, the multiplication between matrix and the constant. Uh, second thing, I need to multiply two matrices. So I made one more helper on top of my constant multiplication helper. Uh, and uh, for matrix multiplication, matrix, multi matrix multiplication, uh, you multiply like row-wise and column-wise. So for the first element, you take the first row, first column. For the second element, uh, you take like first row, second column, and so on and so forth. Because of that, I can easily cache my rows in the registers like R2, R3, R3 and R4 and I'm putting my X, Y, Z uh, and I'm using my X, Y, Z register to put the column values by the way in opposite order because uh, they are extracted from the register in opposite order. And then I will get a single result and the single result will be written by uh, at the memory location addressed by the register R12 which is also auto decremented. So my matrix multiplication is actually more like uh, storing the address of uh, multiplied matrix in R12 and then I just load the values from the first matrix, which already multiplied from the RAM. I put the constant values, like immediate values from the second matrix and call that helper. And I had to repeat it nine times. Uh, I'm also using the feature of my automatically incrementing direct memory access to load those rows constantly with just LD, not incrementing it, uh, not incrementing the address automatically. I had allocated them in a proper way for this, and that's why I did. Uh, so I have to repeat it like nine times, and finally I need to calculate determinant. For determinant of nine and nine metrics, I need like upper row multiplied by x bits of uh, other rows and I only need six values of them, so I pre-cached all those six values in my registers, and after that I just been calculating the intermediate results, like one by one, multiplying them by the next uh, value from the first row, and putting them into other register, and at the end I'm extracting all of those uh, terms or determinant terms and subtracting them from each other and that is all. So I'm just writing it to the last byte and exiting because my emulator treats it as treats knobs and exit. I haven't measured how slow my emulator is because most of the time is spent not in calculations but in the IO like printing and dumping the state. So it's not interesting but in the next series 
I'm going to start implementing my hardware, like simulating and designing my hardware using Logisim. So probably one day we will check how slow is it in a Logisim. And one day we'll know how slow is it hardware. Thanks for watching and join for the Logisim video in a couple of weeks.